In today's video, I'm going to be ranking for you seven reselling platforms that I have personal experience with. I have actually sold items on all seven of these platforms, and I'm going to share with you as a part-time reseller, which platforms I think are worth your time and which platforms really are not. Won't nobody love you the way they should. Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good. Won't nobody check those body tendons by your neck. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park, and like I mentioned earlier, I am a part-time reseller, which means that I like to sell things on the internet, on the various reselling platforms that I'm going to be telling you about, and I like to try to make as much money as I can doing so. I have a full-time job as a high school choir teacher, but in my spare time, I like to go thrifting, I like to go to buy, sell trade stores and consignment stores, or even just get stuff for free from my friends and sell those items online as my side hustle. It is a great way to make extra money. I've actually made over over $30,000 in profit in the year 2021 alone doing this as a side hustle. So if you want to learn more about reselling, definitely check out my other YouTube videos on that very subject and make sure that you subscribe to this channel because I do upload content like this at least two times a week, although we're in the middle of Vlogmas and I have been uploading like a crazy person to the point that like the rest of my life is kind of suffering, but that's another topic for another day. So in this video, I'm going to be ranking seven different reselling platforms. Now, to be honest, I've actually sold on nine, but I'm not going to be talking about Amazon and I'm not going to be talking about ThreadUp because I feel like reselling on those platforms is a very different kind of reselling than the seven platforms that I'm going to be talking about today. But again, these are ones that I have personal experience with. I'll be sharing some pros and cons about each platform with you and I'll go in order from what I would least recommend to my favorite platform and you probably won't be surprised by what's number one but you might be surprised at the order of the other ones so let's start with number seven the platform that I would recommend the least is Tradez. I have made a handful of sales over there, but really it just did not work for me because I don't sell a lot of high-end items. Tradez really does market itself as a reselling platform for luxury and fine goods. For brands like Chanel and Louis Vuitton and Gucci, it's not really for your Talbots and your American Eagle. <laughs> Although I feel like you see people selling more and more run-of-the-mill stuff on Tradez, that's not what it's for. That's not what people are looking for. So I don't think that that stuff is going to sell as well, but it really is a little bit more well known for higher end brands. There were a few pros, one just being, and this isn't really a great pro, but it was nice to get random sales from Tradez here and there when I wasn't expecting anything, but that's not really like the best pro to be like, I liked making a sale every four months. Like, I'm really reaching here. Another pro is I don't believe that on Tradesy people can make offers. I think that they just have to buy the item at the price that you set for it. So that's kind of nice to not have to worry about like haggling with anyone, but also like there just weren't that many bites to begin with. So some cons aside from the fact that for me, it was just difficult to make sales because it was difficult to list over there in the first place because it was difficult to come by the kinds of items that they wanted you to list there. I found listing on TradeZ to be pretty complicated. They asked a lot of interesting questions that gave me pause. <laughs> like it was just a little bit more difficult to list over there. It took a little bit more time than I would have liked for it to take. And although you can cross list to TradeZ from List Perfectly, which is a Chrome extension or a listing software that I use, there were still those certain questions that would come up. And it was probably one of those things too, where like, I just wasn't able to do it enough for it to become muscle memory. I just was never a fan though of their listing process. Also, it takes forever to receive your payout from TradeZ. I think it takes close to a month. Let me know in the comments if I'm mistaken, but I think it's something close to that. It's pretty ridiculous. And so I would definitely call that a con of TradeZ as well. So for that reason, I give TradeZ a D minus. Moving on to my number six reselling platform. This is going to be Shopify. Uh, Shopify has some pros and, you know, these pros are the reasons why I tried out Shopify in the first place. Some of the pros are they have very low fees and it's easy to personalize Shopify. It's kind of cool to create your own online store and to do with it what you want, to use the colors that you want, to pick your font, to create, you know, your own template for how listings are going to look, to choose how many pictures you're going to have in your listing. I mean, the list goes on and on. You can really make this website look exactly the way that you want it. 
that is also a con though, is that if you don't really have any experience with website development or just on the nuances of how to put something like that together, it is hard and I don't have that experience. So it was hard. Now, obviously you can hire someone who has that experience to put together a beautiful website for you. I didn't want to do that because another con of Shopify is that you need to drive your own traffic to your Shopify store. And this is something that is just difficult for me to do. I just always forget it's hard to invest that time and energy to do so. And so I found very little success with Shopify. I know other people who are killing it on Shopify, but it was just really difficult for me. I still have my Shopify store. If you want to check it out, I'll put the link here, but it's not a platform that generates a lot of sales for me. And for that reason, I give Shopify a two out of five. The next platform, my number five platform is Kitizen. The pros of Kitizen, honestly, it is a really cute platform. Like I enjoy being on the platform in terms of just like looking around and like, it's just really darling. You know I'm reaching though if that's one of the pros of this platform. Um, Another really neat thing I think about Kitizen is that it is so niche, obviously, because it's Kitizen. It's where you sell kids clothes. They have since then branched out to where you can also sell women's clothing over there. But the reason why it's so nice that it is so niche is that the people over on Kitizen like really know their kids clothes. They really know which kids brands are up and coming, which kids brands are really popular popular. And if you're listing those popular trending kids brands, you're going to have maybe a little bit more activity on those listings in your Kitizen store than you would, you know, maybe on other platforms where kids clothes is not the emphasis. Now, that being said, um, I do think that there are some cons to Kitizen. One is that I just think it's hard to make sales. They have some pretty good features. For example, you can put your entire store on sale. However, I do wish that they had a feature like Poshmark and eBay and Mercari where you could send offers to people who like your items. It's a missed opportunity. I think Kitizen could make more money by helping sellers make more sales through features that are as simple as offers to likers. Kitizen, I think, also requires for buyers to be pretty active on their app or on their site. Kitizen is similar to Poshmark, where if you don't share your listings pretty frequently, your listings continue to just drop lower and lower and lower in the search results, resulting in your items not really being seen. And sharing on Kitizen is really a huge pain, resulting in me never sharing. <laughs> like, I probably share my Kitizen in store once every six months or something and therefore I hardly ever make sales over there. For that reason, I give Kitizen two and a half teddy bears out of five. Number four would be Facebook Marketplace. So starting with the pros of Facebook Marketplace, they have really low fees, which, you know, the platforms that I'm going to be talking about after Facebook Marketplace, while they're pretty great platforms, their fees are much higher and for good reason. I mean, you're going to hear about some of the cons here of Facebook Marketplace in a second, but I do love their low fees. Um, Facebook Marketplace also has a pretty huge audience, despite the fact that it is a newer reselling platform. I think, you know, people were able to list things on Facebook Marketplace for a while now to sell locally, but it's pretty new where they added it so that you can now ship items from your home to a buyer, you know, in different parts of the country. And that's something that obviously you were able to do with all of these other reselling platforms that I have talked about already and will be talking about. But just the fact that they've opened up the ability to ship nationwide, that's pretty huge given Facebook's already really big audience because of how big Facebook is. Or I guess I should say meta. I will never get used to that. And that's another pro of Facebook Marketplace is the fact that there's both the local selling and then regular kind of reselling platform where you ship things out to people component. The fact that you can do both and the fact that both are pretty well established on Facebook is huge. You know, Mercari is trying to make this huge push to sell locally. I don't know about you. I've turned that option on on every single one of my listings basically since Mercari introduced it. I've yet to make a local sale or even have 
have an inquiry about the possibility of a local sale. Let me know in the comments below if you've had any luck with local sales on Mercari, but there just hasn't even been the possibility of one on my end. But with Facebook Marketplace, that's already built into the DNA of what Facebook Marketplace is. That's how Facebook Marketplace started. And so that's what people know when it comes to buying things on Facebook. And so adding shipping as an option is just a natural extension of that. So those are all, I think, really great pros. It's a huge audience, low fees, love it. Now, there are a lot of cons, one being that Facebook Marketplace is growing too fast. And what I mean by that is they are doing all these really great things, like adding the ability for sellers to you know, ship. But with that comes a lot more problems and issues. And when you have more problems and issues, you need more manpower to be able to deal with those issues. And Facebook Marketplace does not have that. They don't have the manpower to deal with the simplest of issues. Essentially, whenever you need help, you're directed to a bot and you're directed to type your question into uh, some sort of online form. And at some point, hopefully you get an email from what you assume and hope is a human being and are able to kind of communicate with someone, but they're very quick to resolve your issues when they're not really resolved. And it leaves a bad taste in your mouth as both a buyer and a seller. So, you know, when companies grow too fast, I'm sure it's like exciting for them and whatnot, but also if they're growing at a pace that's not sustainable and they're not able to keep up, then the people who suffer are the sellers and the buyers because, you know, we're not able to get the help that we need when we need it. And so, you know, I know a lot of sellers who have said that they're done with Facebook Marketplace until they can figure things out and until they can get an actual team to keep up with the volume of transactions that are happening on Facebook Marketplace. Um, I'm still risking it and just continuing to sell over there, you know, selling a handful of things here and there. But yeah, it's the wild, wild west out there. So sell at your own risk. Another con of Facebook Marketplace, in my opinion, is that if you don't sell something on Facebook Marketplace, basically within the first few days of listing it, the chances of you selling that item are pretty rare. You know, on Poshmark and on eBay, things can sit for a while and then they'll eventually sell. You know, on eBay, I feel like I'll always randomly get sales here and there on just really stale listings, just out of nowhere. That is not the case with Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace has come out with some new features where you can like renew your listings so that they kind of jump to the top of search results again. Or an even newer feature is they allow you to delete and relist listings that are, you know, pretty old. They've been renewed a handful of times, which is great. But overall, the way that their algorithm works, if something hasn't sold within the first few days of being listed or renewed or, you know, deleted and relisted, chances of it selling are pretty slim. So for all those reasons, I give Facebook Marketplace like a, like a, like it's not a thumbs up, but it's, you know, it's one of those. Number three for me is Mercari. Now, let me just say Mercari has really stepped up in the year 2021. In 2020 and 2019, I was just kind of like, Mercari, what are you doing? Like, it was just not very consistent. I don't know. I never really felt Mercari until 2021. Like it has gained my favor. So let's talk about the pros first. One thing that I like about Mercari is that it's really straightforward and they have very easy to use features. Some of my favorite features that you probably hear me talk about all the time in my what sold videos are things like their smart pricing. They also have a feature called promoted listings. The last feature that I use pretty frequently is their offers to likers. So those are some really great features. I also like that you can sell basically anything on Mercari. It's a lot like eBay where you can sell anything from clothes to coins or to washi tape. I don't like you can literally sell anything on Mercari and that's kind of cool. And while Mercari doesn't have like the greatest customer service either, like it's not like you can pick up the phone and talk to someone, but I personally also haven't had very many instances where I've had to reach out to Mercari. And part of that is because, you know, they do a good job when issues come up of just kind of dealing with things in house. For example, in a lot of situations, if you ship something out and the buyer has an issue with it, a lot of times Mercari will just give the buyer a refund, but also release the funds to you. I think they would just rather everyone be happy than to have to like mediate a situation where people have to hash it out. I am here for it as long as they continue down that path. So those are some of my pros. There are some cons to Mercari. One is that while they have some really great features, like I talked about, one feature that they don't have that I wish they desperately would is the ability to run a sale on all of your listings. I feel like it's a pretty simple feature 
nature and so i'm kind of confused as to why they don't have that mercari also just has a smaller audience it's just not as big of a reselling platform as ebay or even poshmark and finally i just feel like as a platform it's just not very sophisticated. I don't really enjoy the platform itself. I don't feel like it's easy to shop on Mercari. And as a seller, it's fine. But I feel like because it's hard to shop on Mercari, I don't make as many sales on Mercari. However, they do a good job of, you know, creating lots of incentives for people to shop. You know, they have a lot of coupons that they offer people who are listing a lot. And, you know, those are the things that kind of force me to shop on Mercari. But otherwise, I don't think that I would. So for those those reasons I award Mercari a bronze medal. Coming in in my number two spot is eBay and I'll be honest with you it was like between eBay and Poshmark because they're both great platforms they both do really well for me but ultimately eBay is number two for me so here are the pros one it is designed for volume sellers it is designed for people who want to have thousands of listings and they have all these tools and features and all these bells and whistles to help sellers achieve that because obviously eBay knows the more you sell the more money they're gonna make off of you. But there are people on eBay making a full-time income selling just on eBay because that's what eBay is designed for. I mean, you can sell on eBay as a hobby seller as well, just part-time, just for fun, just you know something that you wanna do on the side, but it is really designed for that serious seller in mind. And as a result, there are a lot of features and a lot of tools to help you make as many sales as possible. Tools like tons of data and analytics, tools like Terapeak that are gonna help you research you know, how to list your item, how to price your item, features like sell similar, you know, ways to run tons of different kinds of sales. It's a really sophisticated platform, not necessarily in look, but in function. eBay has a huge audience. It's the biggest reselling platform out of all of the ones that I've listed by far for a couple of reasons. The main reason being, I think, that it was the first reselling platform to emerge. And as a result, people have just kind of grown up with it. It's just been something that they've used and shopped on for a very long time you know my husband tells me that he has co-workers who buy everything on ebay you know it's like they're amazon like they just shop on ebay because that's just what they know and the second reason why ebay has such a huge audience is because of the fact that you can shop on ebay worldwide and not only is it available worldwide but you can set up your ebay store to where people all over the world can see your listings and buy things from you and you have the ability to ship things out worldwide. That's not something that you can do on Mercari. It's not something that you can do on Poshmark. It's not something that you can do on Kitizen. Just because they have Poshmark in Canada and in Australia doesn't mean that we as sellers get to actually interact with those buyers. It just means that they have Poshmark. But with eBay, you can actually interact with and sell items to people all over the world so obviously that's going to open up your audience which is amazing on ebay you also have the ability to sell basically anything you could even sell your car on ebay if you wanted to but what i like about platforms like ebay and mercari is that not only is it permissible to sell things other than clothes but they're designed to help you sell those kinds of things. They're designed to help you sell hard goods in the ways that the listings are set up, in the you know types of drop-down menus that they have. I mean, they know what it is that you're selling and they're trying to help you put in the correct information to give buyers the information that they need to find your listing. Now, eBay has some cons and boy, do they have some big ones. One is because there are so many features, it's a hard platform to learn. I've been selling seriously on eBay now for probably over two years, and there's still so much that I don't know. There are still so many features that I've not even touched because it, it can get overwhelming. Um, it's a good thing, but it can also be a lot, especially if you're new to eBay. I know a lot of people get really stressed out, even just when it comes to shipping on eBay, because there is a lot to it. And especially when you throw in the worldwide piece of it, knowing that maybe you have to ship something to Iceland or something, you know, it can be very scary. So it's not an easy platform to learn. There are a lot of rules. There are a lot of things that you can do to piss eBay off accidentally, and you didn't even know that you 
you did anything wrong and then the next thing you know your account is suspended for a couple days um, so there's a lot to learn but ultimately i do think it's worth learning and worth trying out because there's a lot of money to be made on ebay probably the worst thing about ebay however from the perspective of a seller is that they go above and beyond for their buyers and not so much for their sellers. You know, the nice thing about eBay is a lot of times you can like actually have a conversation with someone from eBay on the phone or in chat, but what they'll tell you is, well, that's the cost of doing business is that sometimes you're gonna have returns or sometimes you're gonna have things get lost and you just are out that money or out that postage or, you know, whatever it is. And it's really frustrating. And there are people who have gotten burned by eBay enough times that they've said, I'm done with eBay. It's not worth the stress. It's not worth the headache. I have had some frustrating situations on eBay, but I also understand that that's the cost of doing business is, you know, sometimes you're going to have returns, even when you did absolutely nothing wrong and the buyer was 100% at fault. But, you know, that's the same thing. If you were to have a brick and mortar store, people will buy things and realize that they just don't like it anymore and try to return it or they'll wear it and then try to return it. There are lots of situations like that, no matter what, when it comes to business, because the truth is we're people dealing with other people. And while most people are quite lovely, there is that 1% who just kind of stink and can suck it. Like just, bleh, just go live in a hole somewhere. I don't know. So for those reasons, I give eBay a solid 85%. And that leaves us with my number one platform, Poshmark. <laughs> I mean, you had to guess that that was gonna be number one. My YouTube channel is called Becky Park on Poshmark. Poshmark is my first love. It was my gateway into the reselling world and a gateway, I think, for a lot of people because it is just so easy to use. It's so easy to get started on Poshmark. There are some nuances once you get into it, you know, when it comes to bundling, when it comes to sending offers to likers, when it comes to closet clear out, there's a lot of like extra stuff, but just the simple act of listing and shipping on Poshmark is so simple. Anyone can do it anyone can do it. They just make it so easy. And so that's one of the reasons why it's my number one platform. There are a lot of things that you need to do in order to be successful on Poshmark, things like sharing your closet, things like sending offers to likers. But one of the great things about those tasks is that you can now automate those tasks. Yes, you have to pay to automate those tasks. You have to pay for a sharing service or pay for um, uh, a software like Posture VA to share your listings for you. But these are tasks that you can give away. And by doing so, you can see some pretty great results in your sales. And Poshmark does have some great features. I know a lot of people don't care for Closet Clear Out, but I use it to make some pretty great sales week to week. I also think that they've come out with some really great new features like, you know, the ability to send offers in bulk or the ability to reach out to people who have liked items or purchased from you in the past, again, in bulk to send them a message or to send offers on any existing bundles that have been made in the past. You know, there are lots of really cool features, but one of my cons is that Poshmark is very slow to hear the needs and wants of the community. They have a team of people working on all sorts of things, but not usually the things that, you know, Poshmark sellers have been asking for. Again, they've been rolling out some really, really great features, but they're just very slow to do so. However, at this point, you know, we have most of the features that we've kind of been asking for. So, you know, there's not very much to complain about, which is great, uh, but I do wish they were just quicker to respond to the needs of the community. Probably the biggest con, in my opinion, when it comes to Poshmark is it is very difficult to get a hold of them if you need assistance with something. If there is an issue, there's, again, no phone number you can call. I think there's an email, but they're notoriously slow at getting back to people. Um, whenever people reach out to me and they're like, I have an issue and I don't know how to contact someone with Poshmark or I've emailed them and they haven't responded and it's been three days, I always tell them, try DMing them on Instagram. That's not how a company should operate. There should be a very easy way to get assistance if you need it. So the fact that you have to like slide into their DMs, that's weird. Like that's not how it should be with a company as big as Poshmark, but that's the truth. That's where it's at right now. So they have some growing that they need to do in the customer service department. So definitely a big con, but overall it's my number one. So it gets from me, I don't know. I didn't plan this one out. It gets two 
but one thumb up and one this way. So as you can see, there's no perfect reselling platform and my list is gonna look very different from someone else's. And in fact, I encourage you as you're watching this to leave me a comment letting me know what your order would be, what your top three would be, you know, for the reselling platforms that you sell on because I'm willing to bet that, you know, it's gonna look very different from mine and that's okay. You know, it all depends on each individual's reselling business and how they like to conduct their business, how they like to list, how they like to ship, what kinds of things they're selling. That's all gonna have an impact on what platforms you sell on. I didn't even mention platforms like Etsy or Depop or Grailed because those are not platforms that I've tried out yet, mainly because of the fact that I don't sell a lot of vintage, I don't sell a lot of streetwear, so it doesn't really make sense for me to be on those platforms. Not to say that I never will be, but it just doesn't make as much sense. Now, perhaps you're watching this video because you're on a platform, but you're in a position where you want to add another platform or two when you're wondering which platform is best for you. Hopefully watching this video helped you figure out what platform you think you want to go with next. And a big tip that I would have as you start adding to your, you know, reselling platform portfolio is to look into a cross-listing software like List Perfectly. I love List Perfectly because it makes cross-listing a breeze, but also also because I use it as my inventory management system. It's great for letting me know which platforms all of my listings are on. And once something sells, it's really easy and quick to delete that listing from all of the other platforms that I have it listed on. If you want to try out List Perfectly yourself, I do have a coupon code that I will leave down in the description below. It's just Becky Park and it allows you to save 30% off of your first month of List Perfectly, which is, you know, some pretty huge savings. So that would be one of my biggest tips for you when it comes to adding more platforms is to look into a cross-listing software like List Perfectly to help you grow on other platforms faster. The other tip that I would have is to take it slow. If you're selling on one platform right now, do not start listing on three other platforms starting tomorrow. I would take it one platform at a time and I would try to learn that platform inside out before you move on to another platform. You want to make sure that you understand the rules and the different nuances of each platform so that you can maximize your efforts over there so that you can make as many sales before you start adding different platforms and start getting confused as to what's allowed on this platform, what's the best practice on that platform. If you can move one platform at a time, you're going to find the most success and get the most sales out of each platform. I don't know why this video is so long. I thought this was going to be short and sweet, but if you got anything out of this video, I would super duper appreciate a big thumbs up because that actually helps other people discover this video and get the same help that you were able to receive and also helps people, you know, find my channel, which I'm not going to be mad about. And if you feel like you're vibing with me and with my channel and with the information that I'm giving you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well so that YouTube can alert you every time I upload new content. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope that you know what your next platform is going to be. Thank you for hanging out with me. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.